Hello, and welcome to the African Podcast. I'm Rebecca Tripp, and today I have with me Laura Montague. Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Um, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy Indigenous Persons Day. Um, it's also summer solstice, so big day. <laughs> Thank you for the reminders. <laughs> Why don't we start off by you quickly introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Laura Montague. I am married to my husband, Jesse, uh, who also went to Fleming College with me, uh, which is just a little fun fact. Um, I'm a stepmother to his two children, Kira and Samantha. Uh, and I was born and raised in Peterborough, so I've really got to watch this area develop over the years, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of it uh, without being one of those people that unfortunately got to travel or move away for school. <laughs> yeah. um, I graduated from Fleming College um, with a dual diploma in paralegal law clerk. Uh, in 2012. So I just realized that I have been graduated for 10 years now. Wow. Um, I don't know where the time goes. <laughs> well, congratulations on that milestone. Um, yeah, no, thank you. I, um, I took my paralegal exam in uh, October 2013. Um, so I gave myself enough time to uh, grasp this new concept of oh my gosh, I graduated from Fleming College. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. Um, I also gave myself enough time to um, really study the paralegal exam mm -hmm. um, because that's a, it's a difficult exam. It's a difficult time. It's scary, which is natural. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I gave myself at least eight months before I took the exam and I was licensed uh, by the Law Society shortly after. So about nine years ago. So I currently work as property manager and in-house paralegal for Ashburnham Realty, which is a local property management and development firm in town. Um, I'm actually celebrating my eighth year with the company, um, which is so weird. It's like 10, 9, 8. <laughs> Um, but I, I am so proud of myself and everything that I've learned from my experience with Ashburnham. Uh, we actually own and manage our own properties in Peterborough. Uh, our company specializes in both residential and commercial properties. Um, we have over a thousand tenants, so our day-to-day -day is unique and ever-changing. Uh, and we're currently in the process of developing two large housing projects. Uh, one is in the city that's called the rail yard and one is by Del Quarry Park, which is called the sawmill. So our company is quickly going from a four person unit at one point to, you know, we're at 15 plus employees and contractors. Um, so we're quickly expanding. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. And being in the Hebrew community, um, you definitely see that Ashburnham is like ever changing and, and ever growing. So yeah, it's exciting to watch for sure. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so why don't we start from the beginning and talk about what post-secondary education you have and how did you land on the paralegal profession? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so for me, I knew from an early age that I enjoyed learning and researching, reading and helping people. Um, I was the loud kid who would speak up for others when they didn't have a voice. And I was the kid who constantly asked questions. Um, I'm sure that was annoying for both my teachers and my parents. <laughs> Um, but I also remember watching legal dramas or reading legal nonfiction books uh, throughout my childhood. So that's kind of, I guess, where it started. Um, fast forward to high school. Um, I went to PCBS. So um, that school is no longer. I always like to share that because it's a it's a huge monument in my milestones. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed my Canadian law class in grade 11. Um, and I was able to attend a co-op placement um, at Howell Fleming, uh, which was a Peterborough law firm uh, since dissolved. Um, now it's LLF um, lawyers. And uh, so I spent a lot of my grade 12 year at this law office um, and I enjoyed shadowing uh, the staff while they 
kind of conversed or completed their different tasks. Uh, and I realized that even though at the time my jobs were basically mediocre, uh, you know, filing, shredding, placing documents in the correct folders, dropping off checks, grabbing coffee or delivering items to the courthouse, that it actually was building my legal career and is likely how I got through school and my current career as a paralegal. Um, so I was really reflecting on that when I was, was thinking about what you would be asking. Uh, and that was basically the foundation of how I applied for college. Um, but I actually started in police foundation um, which is funny to me now. Uh, I love all the work that the police do. I'm just not a runner. I and I don't know why, but I just I, I just signed up. <laughs> no, that's fair. Uh, and then quickly, <laughs> I'm not a runner. I don't know. It, it was like I liked everything about police foundations except the cardio, you know. <laughs> um, but as a talker, I was talking to my guidance counselor at the school and quickly realized that maybe I should be in paralegal mm -hmm. uh, and that it would be a better course for me. So thankfully, um, I was able to get through that first semester, which is common courses. You know, you have uh, psychology and sociology, communications, uh, and then I was able to join the paralegal class in January. So um, I quickly realized that that was probably the best decision for me. <laughs> it's yeah. um, it's great to hear that the common first semester was used because I I really like that there's a common first semester. It gives students the opportunity to learn whether or not they like what what program they're in, and it also gives students the opportunity to change without losing any time or or you know have a wasted semester. So I'm I'm glad to hear that yeah. that you. Yeah. Well, especially, I mean, you're 18 years old, right? Yeah. So it's a huge transition from high school. Um, and even with my placement at a law firm in grade 12, um, because that first semester is so broad that it actually gives you time to ease into that level of education. Everything is new. I had my first apartment. I worked full time. I went to school full time. Uh, and I remember being so brave, but secretly terrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm glad that I went to paralegal because it was a little better suited for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we kind of touched on this already. Um, but is there anything you would do differently looking back on your educational journey? Um, honestly, I don't, I don't think so because my journey was a lesson, um, mm -hmm. regardless of how it, it played out. Um, and for me, I am thankful that it wasn't a costly decision. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I could have pursued police foundations until the you know the end which is normally what I would do I don't like to quit um, but I was able to kind of pivot into another program so naturally um, that it, it just worked out if that makes sense so um, yes in one way I would I would say you know signing up for police foundations was likely a failure but I learned from it uh, and was able to pursue uh, another opportunity that was in a similar field without delaying my education at that time. Mm -hmm. um, because I, as I began to attend the paralegal courses, I, I quickly realized that I probably wouldn't have succeeded in police foundations anyway, mm -hmm. um, because I was more motivated to continue through the paralegal journey, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing I do want to mention uh, is that uh, even though I signed up for paralegal, I also got another opportunity uh, for the summer law clerk program. And I was really intrigued by it because they mentioned it. They're like, you can get a dual diploma and it only, you know, costs you an extra two months of, of your summer. Uh, and then, you know, you quickly go into the fall. Um, many people were not interested in that opportunity because, as you know, a lot of people use the summer months to go home or they, you know, get a quick job um, to kind of fund their education. Uh, for me, I still continued to work. Um, I was working at a pet store at the time and uh, and they were so flexible with me. 
Uh, and it actually was the best decision I made uh, because I was able to continue the schedule that I was kind of already on. I worked nights at the pet store. I went to school during the day and I somehow got all the reading and homework done uh, throughout while managing uh, some semi um, lifestyle outside of that with friends <laughs> and family. Um, but the classroom setting was 15 people at the time. Uh, so the teachers were more available to have open discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I believed by pursuing that summer break um, to not only complete the law clerk um, dual diploma with the paralegal, but it actually helped me in the third and fourth semester of my own program because I was able to maintain my habits by keeping a similar routine at school uh, and I was able to educate myself through a different lens that was actually complementary to the paralegal course. Yeah I did the uh, law clerk program as well but I did it after the paralegal program and which is another opportunity right? Yeah yeah but there was a big difference between students who had done it like the way you did it in between and students that had done it afterwards and the students that had done it in between really um thrived in the third semester of the paralegal program where the paralegal <laughs> Amazing. third semester for me was really difficult because I went for, right from second semester to third semester um so I think the way you did it is is the ideal way to do it because it does really prepare you for that third and fourth semester of the paralegal program Absolutely. And it's all about mindset, right? So you're already in that I'm a student, I have homework that needs to be done. You have your priorities kind of set up out a little more, mm -hmm. um, but you're absolutely right. I, I probably wouldn't have completed the third and fourth semester the same way. Yeah. Yeah. It really prepares you for them for sure. <laughs> so if you were to go back um, and, and go back to school again, what school program or even career would you be interested in pursuing? Um, okay, so I would love to attend school again. Um, I just, I love continuing ed education. And I say to my girls, I'm like, you will never stop learning. And if you do, it's such a waste of a day. You know what I mean? Like, I love, I love learning. Um, but I do believe that I would still attend the paralegal and law clerk programs regardless. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the foundations that that course taught me um, for all aspects of my life. It wasn't just, you know, the law. It was actually a bit of business. It was a bit of communications. It was a bit of how to deal with different clients and people. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were to attend a school again, um, in, in a full semester course, because I do take, you know, courses here and there, um, I would likely try to apply to university um, for any of their community-based programming. Um, I believe that I'm a community builder, not just because of Ashburn and Realty, but kind of the, you know, the boards and the volunteering and the charitable organizations that I get to associate with. Um, and I'm, I'm a huge advocate. I'm, I'm huge in leadership and being a part of a decision uh, for making um, others' lives better, whether that's their own as an individual, their organization, or even our community. Um, I enjoy advocating for others and, and using open communication, uh, such as mediation or alternative dispute resolution, uh, rather than just going to court. Um, I, I really have a strong motivation to learn new things. Um, I'm also very interested in continuing my self-awareness and development journey, uh, which includes podcasts. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I've listened to a few of yours. Um, reading interesting books with topics that include, I don't know, entrepreneurship, mental health, um, fascinating conversations with insightful people, leadership, health and nutrition, I think I just realized actually, as I'm talking that maybe I should be a life coach. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's a school for that. There likely is, but maybe I'll just do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think you make a really good point that you don't have to be in a classroom to be learning, right? There's so many no. different ways of learning. 
Um, yeah. and you're like, when you tell your girls that like, it's a wasted day if you're not learning, cause like, then what are you doing? Right. Like there's just always room for growth in, in, in a positive way. Right. Like there's, there's always something to develop and change and, and learn a new skill. And, um, that doesn't have to be within a classroom. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and even just thinking again, back to mindset mm-hmm. is what are you going to do outside of school? You know, I was just talking, um, one of my girls is 18. So she's transitioning into the university life from the high school life. Uh, and then I actually have my graduation, uh, grade eight graduation for my youngest. Um, so she was all of a sudden just like, oh my gosh, my life is changing. And this is a huge transition. So I always say like, go kayaking, uh, learn how to use the wood saw, go and learn mechanics. If, if that's what you want to do, gardening, anything, mm-hmm. even just by sticking to a routine or painting or baking, that's all essentially learning, um, without the traditional brick and mortar classroom, or mm-hmm. I guess, virtual classroom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So switching gears, um, and we've also already kind of touched on this a bit, but what has your career looked like since graduation? And you've already said that you landed your current job, you know, or no, I think you, did you do your placement at Ashburnham College? Yeah, so actually prior to graduation, I completed my paralegal placement at Ashburnham Realty. Um, I took six (laughs) months. And I, at the time I was only supposed to do 120 hours, but I did 160 just because I was learning so much. Um, And actually they called me back a few times to um, go back and do some paid, uh, you know, paid hours while the other property manager was taking days off. Um, So it actually was really good for me to start it that way. Now um, I would say every day is a new day. Um, I, I can't, um, pinpoint what I'm going to do. I have a schedule and a to-do list to keep me on track, but, um, I manage an office, you know, and that includes filing, drafting, legal documentation, uh, emails, um, inspections, meeting with clients, that kind of thing. Um, I answer questions. (laughs) Um, I'm not really sure how to, kind of describe it, but I guess um, I just wanted to say that Ashburn and Realty was actually my first time in property management. I didn't own any um, physical housing. Um, I had rented before uh, and I had a bit of business knowledge through the paralegal course, uh, as well as working as a manager at uh, a pet store. Um, So I really, I really just jumped in and and learned everything so I guess I'm able to draft legal documentation for their tenancies or business opportunities Um, I could serve notices I could have conversations with clients uh, depending on what's going on I review cases uh, on Canly and you know just Google searches, whether it's the city of Peterborough, um, the Peterborough Legal Center, the Peterborough Housing Center, they all have amazing resources. Um, uh, I attend the Landlord and Tenant Board Tribunal if need be, uh, and I always continue my legal education um, pursuing the uh, CBD courses um, in through the Law Society. Um, so I guess part of that is actually having continuing education just through my current job um, which I believe is key to being successful Um, but I'm not really I'm not really sure how to pinpoint what my job is because we are so unique yeah Um, (laughs) I I really don't I I guess I get an opportunity to listen to clients and colleagues um, I get to um, go for walks downtown and and explore the different restaurants and cafes, which happen to be my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I am on the DBIA board. Oh, sorry. Um, (laughs) No, I just, I have so many things that I really, even they've been trying to give me a job description and and we're just jack of all trades working in the Ashburn and Realty office. So really if something needs to be done, someone's gonna you know do it (laughs) 
Yeah. And what is your position title at Ashburn and Realty? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I honestly don't. I honestly don't. I, um, <laughs> I've worked there for eight years and I guess I'm a property administrator, okay. um, an in-house paralegal property manager, um, Laura at Ash Realty. <laughs> yeah, okay. I go by anything. Yeah. Well, it's nice that you, like, you've been there for eight years. Clearly you love it. So it's, it's almost nice that you don't have a box that you have to live within, right? Like you're able to do yeah. different things and try different things um, because your job allows you to do that. So I think that's great. And like a job title, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people talk about this, how like job titles are overrated, right? Like what does it they actually are. mean when you say you're, you know, X, Y, and Z? So I think that's great. And, and I appreciate how honest you are about <laughs> all the, all the different things that you do. It's great. Yeah. I, I guess I just enjoy the offers, opportunities that are presented to me uh, on any given day. And uh, like you said, I get to not only work in a cool workplace, um, but I get to explore our community and work with community partners. Um, I enjoy my team that I work with. Uh, we recently just went to the Blue Jays game last week, which uh, was definitely needed for team building. It was hilarious. It was a good time. It got us out of Peterborough for a minute. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm really grateful for the job that I have currently um, and the parameters that my bosses, I guess, set but also how fluid it is. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it really does. For those people that don't know, can you quickly explain um, the paralegal profession in Ontario and the connection to the landlord and tenant law? And, and you know, how, do, how does that work within Ontario? Um, okay, so I guess after you finish college and you obtain your diploma, so you graduate, um, you actually need to begin studying for the paralegal exam in order to become a licensed paralegal with the Law Society. Mm -hmm. You will spend months reviewing and reading everything you need to know about the exam, which could include the Code of Ethics. It could include, um, you know, legal practice. So uh, they might give you an example of your client is X and they need to do X. And, and you just have to uh, answer whatever question you can or provide them with an answer uh, on how you would begin that consultation. Um, I, and, and just different things within the paralegal practice, everything that you need to know, they will provide you uh, in a package for that exam. You do need to pay for it. You need to register, pay. They will send you the materials. You do need to study for it. Um, and then you have to actually do the exam, which is different now than when I actually uh, completed mine. Mm -hmm. um, so I had four hours and oh, cool. limited okay. back. Yeah. Limited bathroom breaks, um, and I was sick. <laughs> That's awful. Um, so I know it's it's changed. I, I believe it was explained to me that it's been um, set up in a three-hour chunk in the morning and a three-hour chunk in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, for me, I actually prefer just getting it over with, if that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the lunch uh, break wasn't enjoyable. <laughs> right? Because you're just, your anxiety is there and, you, and you're probably just so pressured to get back into it, to yeah. just get it over with. Um, whereas I had four hours, I knew I had four hours and I knew that I wasn't going to be eating anyway, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I did take it nine years ago, but it sounds like they've changed it to accommodate, you know, different individuals and some people thrive on that. Um, that just wouldn't be the way that I might thrive on it. <laughs> um, but then uh, after you complete your exam, it's a long way home, uh, back to Peterborough. It feels like you're exhausted. You have mixed emotions. Did I do well? Did I not? Uh, and now comes the waiting. So I remember specifically waiting to see if I had passed. Um, and I remember waiting so long uh, and then finally you get this, you know, email, or at that point, it was actually a hard copy document 
that says you pass and you have this moment of disbelief and you're speechless and you're like well now what mm -hmm. um so once you get that piece of paper which i'm ass i'm assuming is an email by this point uh you actually have to register as a licensed paralegal with the law society uh, in order to be approved to begin practicing as a sole proprietor or to join a law firm. Um, and then from there, there is annual insurance, uh, reporting, and education that needs to be done. Um, so that's essentially how to become a paralegal mm -hmm. in Cole's notes. <laughs> Um, because we both know that it's, you know, two years and, um, and not enough time, it feels like, uh, to suddenly be responsible for uh, being a paralegal all of a sudden. Um, the Law Society is wonderful. They really do try to give you resources and reminders and information uh, on your next steps. So uh, you don't have to take the information from me because it will be provided. Um, and then I guess, uh, how does it connect to landlord and tenant uh, through my career? Mm -hmm. um, so I have to have an understanding of property management as a business. Um, and that could include, you know, building inspections. How do, um, how do the buildings work, whether it's plumbing, electrical, all that kind of thing um, before I even get into the landlord tenant board um, law, um, which is both essential to have. So when I'm assisting clients through the business, um, I document everything, every conversation, every email, um, every picture, video, anything like that. So if, if there's one thing that I can say, always document everything, uh, whether you're in this business or another business, not only for your memory, but just so that you're prepared to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I started at Ashburnham Realty, one of the things that I really wanted to do was make sure that tenants are aware of their rights and responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the rights and responsibilities of a landlord. Um, so making sure that you pay your rent on time and what happens if you don't, um, making sure that you provide us with maintenance requests and what happens when you don't. Uh, so that, that kind of starts it off. Um, and then eventually if the conversation, you know, isn't going smoothly or the matter just continues on, that's when you kind of get into serving notices, legal documentation that has everything that you documented before, all those conversations, the photos, uh, everything you did as a landlord um, to prepare your tenants to resolve a, a problem, whether it was rent or damages or interference with uh, the reasonable enjoyment, um, because you, without that, you can't even apply to the landlord and tenant board. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess having evidence to show what what you've done um, in in a case where I was taking on a client outside of Ashburnham Realty, I really had to set up the boundaries and and indicate what is needed and what is necessary in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I always find that clients uh, will come to you and, and the emotion is there. We understand they're upset. This is mm -hmm. their investment. This is their property. Their tenant is doing something to them, um, such as not paying rent, for example, and now it falls back on the landlord. So if I was outside of Ashburnham Realty, I still say document every conversation photo, everything that you did in order to resolve the matter prior to going with a notice. Um, depending on the notice, let's say it's a, an N4 notice, non-payment of rent. Um, if the tenant doesn't, doesn't pay the landlord rent on the first of the month, then they are to serve, uh, the landlord is to serve uh, an N4 notice that quickly outlines, okay, June 1st, they owed $500 they have 14 extra days to make that payment or get in touch with me is basically what an N4 is. In order to pursue the N4, you need a secondary N4 notice serve. So that would be July 1st. 
Okay, July 1st, $500 rent is due. There's a total of $1,000 owed to the landlord. And now we can pursue an application with the landlord and tenant board because it's the tenant's responsibility to make that rent payment. Mm -hmm. um, what I will like to say is that even though a tenant owes rent, you can still be having those conversations even if you apply for the board. Mm -hmm. um, so whether you're a paralegal um, on your own with your own clients or whether you're like me where there's a property management paralegal aspect, um, it's always good to try to communicate with the tenant and say, okay, what is going on? Why do you owe me the rent? Um, how can we make this work without going to the board? Um, maybe, you know, they lost their job and they're embarrassed to tell you. There's a lot of vulnerability there um, and they don't want to lose their housing. So maybe you say, okay, well, I understand that, you know, the pandemic's been difficult on everyone. We understand finances. Why don't we say that instead of $500 for August, let's do $600 and see if you can make payment. Uh, or can you pay half and then we can work on the rest once you're um you know you have a job and you're back on your feet um that kind of thing so i always always encourage communication even before uh the landlord and tenant board mm -hmm. but to take it back paralegals are able to represent both tenants landlords or property owners uh at the landlord and and tenant board. So, of course, no landlord wants to pursue the eviction of a tenant uh, unless there is a reason that is costing them time and money, mm -hmm. uh, specifically when a tenant is not paying rent or is causing issues within the rental unit. Um, but it's absolutely essential that landlords keep those good records, photos, documents uh, in order to move forward. But essentially, you want to have that communication. You want the tenant to be talking to you because the moment you lose that communication is the moment they're not going to pay until they get to the landlord and tenant board, right? It's a difference between $10,000 by the time you get to the landlord and tenant board, or you could resolve it right away and still have that trust and communication with that tenant. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I doubt that most tenants want to be in that situation. Um, I spend a lot of my day creating ten, a tenant file. Uh, so again, every event, every information, even if it's as simple as, hey, I'm going to be two days late for my rent payment and I've approved that. Um, it's, it's always just good to have that communication to fall back on. Um, and then, once we get past that, so tenants can be served with the notices. Um, and then I provide an opinion, I guess, on how the matter may go in the future. Um, this is the expectation. I always say, set the expectation because you're going to have a client that's going to call you constantly and say, well, why is this taking so long? What's happening over there? What am I paying you for? And you understand why because it's it's their investment it's their situation that they've likely been thinking of um but you also have to manage the expectations and that there may be disappointment or unexpected items that come up mm -hmm. whether it's with the board the tenant or the property owner you just have to i guess be open to communicating that with the tenants and with your client. Um, so I guess I guess a lot of my <laughs> a lot of my job is to have conversations to provide support where applicable. Um, you know, you're discussing a matter. Maybe social services needs to be involved. Maybe Peterborough Housing Resource Center could help, uh, or the legal center because the tenant needs an advocate. Uh, and sometimes it is nice talking to another legal uh, mm -hmm. professional over the tenant. Um, and, and that's simply because uh, in, individuals are embarrassed to seek help, to get assistance or support. Uh, so really, one of my jobs is to show empathy and compassion and just have a conversation uh, and, and limit the need to go to the board, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If I can make an observation, um, sure. you said that Ashburnham Realty, I think has a thousand tenants. 
over that- a thousand tenants. Yeah. <laughs> I find it remarkable that Ashburn Realty, you know, this, this big company that's a landlord for a thousand tenants has someone like you, um, that understands like communication, mediation, um, y- you know, having empathy because it is a very vulnerable, um, community, I guess, if I can, if I can put it that way. Um, and I think it's, it's wonderful that a company is growing, but with that, that mindset of, you know, there, there are other things that happen and that can take place that lead to tenants not being able to pay rent. And it's great that, you know, the, the first reaction isn't to, you know, give them a notice that they have to leave the apartment. It's more like, okay, like, let's work through this. Let's see if there's other resources in the community, linking back to, you know, how you're very involved in the community. Um, I just think it's a really good blend and and hearing all the little details about it. um, Like no wonder Ashburn and Realty is, thriving and growing because they have people like you that just like care about the community (laughs) well yeah and and I hate to say it landlords get a bad rep um and unfortunately at the end of the day it's still a business right um the rent needs to be paid or the matter needs to be resolved so really our job is to try to find a solution or a comp- compromise or a negotiation uh, between the tenant and the landlord. Um, I, I simply just use my paralegal and law clerk foundation uh, to do so. Um, I'm also very resourceful. Uh, so I, I simply am successful or Ash Burnham is successful just by having a conversation. Yeah. It's amazing how tenants tend to be just another number to many landlords or investment property owners. Mm -hmm. uh, When really at the end of the day, this is a human, this is a human being who lives in your property. They still need that empathy and compassion uh, while you're trying to work towards a a resolution. Um, You can even see it at the landlord and tenant board. They know that the way it was it was working before needs to change Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of that came out in the in the pandemic and i do see that the landlord and tenant board is trying um, to provide the mediation services to provide resources for both tenants and landlords um, because at the end of the day they're backed up yeah they know that they're very open about it um but at the end of the day these people remained housed and the situation is still ongoing, that causes a lot more stress for both parties. Um, So, you know, supporting a tenant through the process makes it so much easier to resolve the matter at hand. Mm -hmm. Um, Our ideal goal, or I guess um, my success is knowing that a tenant can remain house, that the rent will be paid or, you know, they, we found a resolution or that they've now joined a program that's a little more suitable for their situation rather than trying to evict someone. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of public information and resources or education out there that many individuals are not even aware of that our office can link to. So once a tenant or client understands the matter, Uh, and what they are able to do to resolve the matter, if they're willing to discuss it, it's really easy to have a conversation because you're helping them help you. Uh, We realize that sometimes tenants just need an understanding or they need an advocate or a loved one who is able to be available to support them. And sometimes these tenants don't have that individual. So that's when you get the Peterborough Housing Resource Center involved, you get the legal center involved and not to provide a negative tension, but to just simply be someone that can advocate for this individual so that you can, I guess, reduce the amount of unnecessary board hearings uh, or evictions in, in order to keep the tenant housed and to get paid, which is a huge one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I just I want to I want to take a moment and say that 
this is only one part of my job. It's, it's something that both myself and my coworker, Cassia, are very passionate about. We have wonderful relationships with our clients and our community partners. Uh, a lot of my day to day is actually meeting with prospective or current tenants, um, my own tenants uh, that are commercial uh, based or community partners, um, inspecting properties, showing up in the community and just implementing day to day tasks or future goals, um, which I think needs to be said because I, I don't want to um, come off as my my job is only negative and you know, I, I am dealing with these um, situations that are complex. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still interesting. It's still rewarding. But there are some days that can be emotionally exhausting and challenging. Um, and that's that's with any job, really. Um, you just got to keep keep coming in and keep trying. Um, and it does get easier as the years go by, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you have more experience year after year, right? You yes. You use those tools and then apply them to the next uh, situation. So no, that, I think that's a positive. Yeah. So yeah, I guess, I guess <laughs> my job is actually managing people within their homes as a property manager and paralegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from your landlord perspective, what advice do you have for young adults wanting to move into their first apartment? Um, honestly, if I could go into post-secondary schools and specifically talk to grade 11 or 12 students, I would be happy to do so. Mm -hmm. um, just to begin the conversation of the process of finding an apartment and what the expectations of that tenancy are. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, when you're 18 years old and you're looking to move into um, a dorm, let's say, through a university or college, that's very different than going out into the community and trying to find an apartment yeah. um, because it's already there. It's available. Um, the schools pay for someone to assist you with the housing process. And so you kind of have a foundation once you get into that college or university um, platform. But the problem is, is that not everyone is going to follow suit with that. Um, so there are grade 12 students that just graduate high school and have no idea how to manage a home, right? They likely live with their parents who do it for them. They've likely had their groceries paid for, their meals cooked, their, um, if, if they haven't had a job by that point, maybe a lot of their clothing or music or money comes from just simply birthdays or Christmas. And now they're expected to not only transition out of high school, but they have to get a job and now they have to find a home and now they have to realize what that entails mm -hmm. as well as managing the expectations of being a tenant. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the first thing I would do as an as a new individual 18 19 or even older is draft a short paragraph about who you are and what you are looking for um, that's simply just to get you in the door of a rental company or in the door of of a landlord who is just showing their home um, because that way they know that you've done your homework you know exactly what your budget is you might have a dog or cat, maybe you are single or you have a significant other moving with you, maybe a roommate. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of complexities when you're simply just applying to go to a showing to potentially get an apartment. Um, and I don't think people realize that whether you're young or old um, or, or even just, you know, simply a young adult looking for an apartment is that you almost have to sell yourself similar to a resume just to get a job interview. Um, and people don't just look at your piece of paper and say, oh, it's Rebecca Tripp, I know her. Mm -hmm. they, they want to know your financial background. Yeah. Are you gainfully employed? Where is your income coming from? Um, do you have a vehicle? Do you have pets? Um, can you afford this apartment? That's a huge one. A lot of people don't realize that 
one part of the application process is to simply see if you can actually finance it. You know, if you make a thousand dollars and your apartment is 800 and you have $200 remaining for your essential, um, you know, groceries or soap or clothes or transportation, you're likely not going to get that apartment simply because you cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. So now you have to look at what is the most realistic um, solution for that. Maybe I find a roommate and maybe that $1,000 apartment is now 500 and that gives me that extra $500 towards my essentials. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I need to stay with my parents a little while longer while I save for first and last. A lot of people don't realize we need first and last right off the bat in order to sign that lease. Um, and then you have to budget throughout the, the year because you're signing a 12 month term. So you now have to think from day to day, month to month, year to year on what your budgeting is going to look for, look like. Um, so I really, I just want to talk to the students and explain that process. Um, just to even get in the door and then what happens when you get into the applicant process mm -hmm. you're going to need um, referrals so maybe it's a teacher maybe it's a coach maybe it's a person from church or someone you worked with at mcdonald's while you were in high school um, you need someone to speak on your behalf to say yeah rebecca is an excellent candidate i actually um, worked with her at summer camp and I was in her cabin and she was always the one keeping it clean uh, and even had a schedule of what I was going to do to participate in the in the cabin. That's an amazing referral, but sometimes people don't realize and they submit an application to our office and there's no referrals. There's no employment. It's simply someone just saying, I'd like this apartment. Yeah. Well, there's, there's more to it than that. You, um, I guess if I could sum it up, um, always be kind, always communicate, always be prepared and sometimes over-prepared simply by looking at the application, the Kijiji ad, what are they looking for and how do I apply myself to that listing similar to a resume with a job. Um, and go, go to the appointment. If you can get an appointment, go to it. Even if you aren't interested in that unit, it's a chance to meet a landlord or a property manager uh, that may be aware of other vacancies in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to just have a conversation. <laughs> it sounds very similar to applying for a job, right? Like yes. be prepared, have your references ready. It's, it is a very similar process. And I don't think a lot of people you know, who are new to being in on their own for the first time really understand that, right? Um, and especially with the market these days, you know, there is competition and there there is someone else that can pay. So it's, it's good to put your best foot forward for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I really want to um, commend the team at the Housing Resource Center. Uh, one of the things that the CCRC did during COVID was make a tenants toolkit. Um, mm -hmm. And it's so beneficial and resourceful from the time that you're applying, I am looking for an apartment, I need to budget. Um, this is what I need to present to the landlord property management. And they have all of the Peterborough listings that are available. Uh, as well as vacancy lists through Kijiji ads um, or, you know, property shares. Um, and then not only do they have that, but they also have their resources, what they are able to help you with, as well as what is your rights and responsibilities of a tenant versus the landlord and what are the rights and responsibilities of the landlord. Um, so I would really recommend and encourage individuals who are looking in the market that might not be aware or might just need that cutting edge uh, for their application to check out that resource on their website. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe I'll link it to this episode because um, I think that's yeah. a great resource, absolutely. Especially if it's all in one place, like how easy it would be yeah. to- Yeah, well, and it's all 
online and it's one of those things that I just want to write to the you know core of the district school board and I'm like are you aware of this can we yeah. talk about this you know <laughs> we yeah. love the Peterborough Housing Resource ladies so this is a shout out to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you've been working in the legal industry and the real estate industry for years now um if you could change anything with a wave of the wand of a wand what would you change um with the wave of my wand I really want to find that wand um I have so many things I want to do to better this world but if I had to choose one um I would say that uh I just wish that everyone had communication skills you know um we learn about words but most individuals do not know how to participate in a conversation that involves right wrong Long, incomplete or correct or complex answers. Um, so I think one of the major issues in our world today in every individual is simply not knowing how to proactively have a conversation um, or they're unable to um, make both parties feel heard um, or, you know, like even just learn something. Um, so I guess if I could, communication skills would be the top of my list. Mm. Um, and I guess adjacent to that, I would, I would also say that I would recommend saying yes to networking events, coffee, lunch requests. Uh, the reason why is because it's an opportunity to meet someone new from a different background or perspective while enjoying a good meal and hot beverage <laughs> uh, from hopefully one of the local businesses um, whether it's 15 to 60 minutes just do it because there are a few times where I've had a conversation with someone where I didn't learn something new and that also opens up a simple meeting that could lead to an opportunity in your future as well mm -hmm. so communication skills would be my ideal change right now <laughs> uh, yeah it makes a big difference um, so my last question, what one piece of advice would you give your 18 year old self if she was sitting right in front of you? Oh, if I could have a full conversation with 18 year old Laura, I just, I would love that opportunity. Um, I guess what I would say is you don't always need a plan. Sometimes you just need to breathe, sit with the discomfort, trust, let go, see what happens and stop worrying. There's really no point in wasting your time worrying, which I am still actively learning. Um, as we know, a lot of the time we worry due to fear, but fear really comes from a lack of knowledge. Uh, so the only way that you can combat that is by showing up, learning from our failures or the lessons that were provided to us in that opportunity and moving on so that in the future, we can respond differently and teach others to do the same. Um, as we know, life is not easy. It never will be. Uh, so really, it, it, it's important to work together as a team or collaborate with another individual such as yourself who are working towards the same goals. Um, brainstorm, problem solve, create better opportunities for the future. Uh, cheer on and empower others. That's a huge one. Um, but I guess... If I was to tell that young woman anything, it is she is important in this world and that she will be challenged at times, but that she is going to do amazing things, that she will always be able to use her voice to stand up for others, uh, and that just do not let fear take over you and do not let anyone lessen your motivation. Just become a better version of yourself and remember have fun, <laughs> you know, every single day, just have fun. I feel like that's really good advice for 18 year old Laura, but also like 60 year old Laura, like everything you said is so true. Like, you know, fear will happen and, and hard days happen, but you, you'll overcome them. And, and there's, you know, no point in worrying and stressing. Like it doesn't help anything. <laughs> Right. It's, it's something that I'm still actively learning every single day, but I just, I feel like 32 year old Laura just wants to give 18 year old Laura a hug and yeah. just say, it's going to be okay. You will make it, you are resourceful and resilient and um, you will just learn from your past failures or from the lessons that 
that are provided to you. Um, so I, I hope I walk my walk or my talk, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but those were the things that I would share with myself. So thank you for asking that. Yeah, um, yeah. I was really I, able to explore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much for um, taking the time to sit with me and, and chat about your career and your education and your future goals. Um, I, I see big things happening not, with not only Ashburn Realty, but, you know, with your involvement in the community. Um, so thank you for sharing with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And, um, and I would just like to say anytime. Uh, and to anyone that's out there that wants to connect, I'm on LinkedIn, please feel free to reach out. I would love to have a coffee with you um, and, and try to just chat with you. You know, I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, two things I quickly wanted to mention before the end of this episode. Um, one is that you can now listen to these podcast episodes on Apple Podcast. So I hope you can enjoy them there as well as wherever you've been listening to them so far. Um, and secondly, next week, next Friday is going to be Canada Day. So I thought it would be well suited to do an episode Episode on citizenship. So you won't want to miss that. Definitely tune in next week. Thank you so much for listening to the applicant podcast.